Hey guys, I am Liana from Guyana, located in South America, and I am standing here in Paramakatoy Region 8. I know many of you have probably heard about it once you live in Guyana, but if not, probably your first time hearing that name. Um, so I travel a lot for my job and I decided to show you guys a little bit of what I see, the lovely sceneries, where I stay so you can get a little feel about accommodation, whether we have internet, light and so forth. So stay tuned if you want to see more about Paramakatoy. If you've ever been here before you would have noticed that the people are using this windmill here basically it helps you to get water down at a well down there. And you, you would have to walk like all the way up there some persons. We have persons living in that direction and that direction. This place is very, very hilly. And in the evening, oh my God, you don't want to feel this. It is very, very cold. But the beauty about this place is that it's serenity, the quietness, Lush. the people, the food. You know, you, you, you don't want to miss that part of it. The tranquility. That is the one thing I would say I love about Paramakatoy. Now come with me. <laughs> Georgetown and I brought up an electric kettle mm -hmm. and so Four I bathe like once per day warm the water. So okay, so you don't do the early yeah. morning thing. No, but now we have a we didn't get stove and pots and so mm -hmm. on then. So now we have pots and stoves. <laughs> I like that. Yes, so yeah, because I like cold water, but when you see me like doing yeah. that just to feel the water before <laughs> I actually go under, it says a lot. It says a lot. Walking up this hill, up and down. Yeah, you would want to do this if you like adventure. Come on, yeah, let's go take a look. Oh, oh, no. No. This is the guest house at Park Makatoy. It's the only guest house, right, Laverne? Yeah. Now, if you like others, trust me, you would want to do this. You would want to come, take a sit, take a swing, or even a lie down. <laughs> <laughs> All right? That's only if you like outdoors. And then there are the rooms. I'm gonna show you my room. So you got the price there. This is one of the self-contained rooms. There are only two self-contained rooms. Don't mind my sunscreen and my makeup palette. There is a mosquito net, a blanket because the night is cold, two pillows, 
um, a table, a washroom facility. This is what it looks like. And a shower. And a bucket of water in case water isn't coming from the shower, I guess. <laughs> so this is what a self-contained room looks like. And of course, from the guest house, there's a beautiful view. You can see the mountains and the landscape. You can see when a plane is coming. Because, of course, we walked up a hill, so you can see quite a lot from here. These are clothes lines. When the people wash, they don't have dryers here, so... Of course, many places in Guyana don't have, so this is not really unique to Paramakatoi. We hang on clothes lines. A black tank to store water. I know earlier in the video you would have probably seen these solar panels atop this roof. This is because Paramagatoy generally does not have electricity. The people depend on solar power. And um, earlier as you saw the windmill for the water. And this is because we don't have an electricity company here in Paramagatoy. So at the guest house, uh, we get light during the day as you can see there's a light bulb on so we get to charge our phones during the day and in the night the light is still on for a certain amount of time this is the hallway or the lobby for the guest house by the way and these are the other individual rooms that are not self-contained they share a bath and a and a toilet here and then there's a kitchen. So yeah, as I was saying, there is no electricity. <laughs> it's 1500 a day. I think people probably come and cook here. There's water coming from the tap. Um, so we just have to depend on the timings they have for the lights to be on so we got to take advantage of charging our phones or any other equipment you might come with or devices and yeah hey lovern hi <laughs> we're gonna get some water at a nearby shop because uh well we need some water to drink so this is the back gate of the guest house i know i mentioned that we were going for water but Oh. These are chickens. That people, <laughs> <eat those sometimes. laughs> yeah, people eat those sometimes. Yeah, in Guyana we call them yard fowls. <laughs> yeah, they're just a bit harder than the actual chicken that you're accustomed to. And trust me, I had it, and it, it was it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I know that we, I mentioned that we're going for water, but <clears throat> we're also going for internet. <laughs> we got to pay to use the internet because the guest house doesn't have internet access. And um, you got to pay a certain amount of money per megabyte. I can't remember how much. So when I get there, I'll let you know um, what the cost is. So you got to come prepared for all of that when you're coming to Paramakatoy. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. <laughs> How was school today? Good. Say it in your language. Uncle Bear. <laughs> and what language is that? Patamona. Patamona. That's the official language for Paramagatoy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. That's something we forgot to mention earlier. They speak another language here. But they speak mostly English. But that's their, their dialect. Their dialect. It's called Patamonas. So this is the shop where everyone comes to get not only beverages and snacks, 
But most importantly for us, the internet. It is dark in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the community shop. How much One. a megabyte for the internet? The MB is 500 and 100 MB is total. Okay, so 500 Ghana dollars for 50 megabytes and a thousand Ghana dollars, which is like five US dollars, is for how much? A hundred megabytes, yeah. So when we pay for our megabytes, this is what we get. It's a code that you have to put in to your phone. When you go to Wi-Fi, you put this in your phone and you get a couple of minutes of, of data depending on, you know, how much you do with the data. Whether it's... Um, you can't watch a video with it because obviously it'll finish fast. Connected. <laughs> There is an agricultural expo here in Park Makatoy and the villagers and those from a little bit further afield they've brought out their produce to sell and um, people are taking advantage of it and buying whatever produce is available. Our ground provision, cassava. Yeah. 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 This is grown in. Right here. Yeah. This is grown in Parma, Yeah, grown in Parma. We have this type here. We have another one there, another variety there. This here? Yes. You can make wow. with it. You can make curry with it. You can make curry with it. How do they sell it? Two? Yeah, two hundred dollars a pound. Okay, two hundred a pound. It's very heavy. This, this probably have about fifteen pounds. Squash? Yeah. Yeah. Squash? No, this is pumpkin. pumpkin. One variety of pumpkin, another one there. Okay. And Edo. And, and this is another variety of yam as well. Yes. A different type of yam? Yeah, we call it Spanish yam. Oh my god. When you peel, when you peel this thing, it, it boils like potato, Irish potato. Oh. It's very tasty. It makes, it makes you with this. Okay, and this is Edo, right? And this is Edo. Okay. We have big ones like these, right? When it really thing, but now this is the second crop. Okay, all of this is grown in Parma. Right? Yes, all of this is grown in Parma. This comes from Keto. Mm -hmm. We can also plant these in Parma, but right now the farmers don't have any. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ginger, right? Ginger, right. Okay. 400 a pound? Okay. Any cashew nuts? No cashew nuts here. Okay. And how do you sell the turmeric? Turmeric is three below. Three? Three hundred dollars a pound. Okay. Well, I, I see that four. Four, here. yeah, I know. Okay. I really wanted some tangerines. I came too the, late. The lady was here was selling tangerines. This is the higher reach. Um, you you might normally use it to jabber. We normally use it to stone fish. You pong it. And you soak it in the water to extract the juice. And when the fish now taste it, it's stunned. I mean, like it poisonous. Oh, you use it to yeah. stunt fish? Yes. I've heard people speaking about it. You know, people who are HIV positive, high risk, good for HIV. Mm -hmm. they, they, they it doesn't them. cure them, but it helps them to live longer? Yeah, it, it cures them. It, it cures, cures them? the virus, kills the virus. That's medically proven? Proven. Okay. Medically proven. Okay. Yeah. And this is not a yam? Yeah, this is another yam. It's another variety of yam. It's a purple one. So when you cut it open, it's purple, or the skin is purple underneath? Um, we can check it. Oh! The yam itself is purple. Wow! Okay. We have different varieties of um, yams here. We have, oh. we have the Kamodi yam, we call it, the long, the long ones. Mm -hmm. This is another type of yam, it's bell yam. Bell yam, okay. okay. Nice, nice. All these are nutritious, organic, organically grown. So why they don't come to Georgetown? The weight, 
kill us. Oh. Very, very costly. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All these lemons are organically. Mm -hmm. This is the sweet cassava there. We didn't put no fertilizer there. Just plant it and it's actually good. Okay. I'll do the one to plant it. Well, that's it for our Paramagatoid tour. I hope you enjoyed the video and you get a good insight and a good grasp as to what happens in Paramagatoid and what the village is like. Stay tuned for my next video for the next village I'll be visiting. I don't know which village is yet, but the only way to find out is to stay tuned.